Hi, I'm Kevin McPartland, Head of Market Structure and Technology Research at Greenwich Associates. The bond market has been going through a lot of changes over the last few years. Today we're going to talk about what those changes are and what that means for the industry. I'm here with two industry experts. Uh, if I can ask you both to introduce yourselves and then we'll get into some questions. Hi, I'm Constantinos Antoniadis, Head of Fixed Income at Liquinet. Liquinet is an institutional trading network and in the third quarter we're launching a DARPA dedicated to the corporate bond space. Hi, I'm Bill Gartland. I'm a Senior Director at Interactive Data, responsible for our continuous fixed income evaluator pricing. So the bond market has been going through uh, quite a bit of changes recently, a lot of it driven really from the, from the financial crisis. Uh, what, what seems to be at the, at the sort of the, the bottom of it all is that dealers have less balance sheet to commit uh, to help clients get their, their orders done. When clients are looking to buy and sell, in the past they would look to their dealers and, and that would be all the liquidity they need. Um, today that environment is more challenged. Um, Constantinos, when we start with you, maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that your customers are seeing and, and, and what they're doing to help uh, alleviate those challenges. Sure. So what we've seen since the beginning of the financial crisis is that the size of the asset class has increased dramatically. Uh, at the same time, the size of the capital that is available to service the asset class has shrunk. As a result, uh, our institutional clients are looking for other avenues of liquidity. Now, in order for these avenues, such as electronic trading platforms, to be efficient and deliver the maximum power, let's say, to the user, we need to make sure that all the ingredients are in place. And one of the ingredients is the availability of pre-trade data, which can be used by the institutional investors to decide whether they would, where they would like to buy or sell a specific security. And second, um, to use this information to justify best price execution and execute a transaction cost analysis. Right, so, so clients are taking, uh, taking more into their own hands than they, than they have in the past. Bill, what are some of the tools that they need and that they're looking to today, the investors, to, to do that? Well, the, the tools I think they need are, as Constantino said, is pricing, right? Um, you know, what they're seeing today from the dealer community is diminished. What, you know, the number of QCIPs that actually trade as a percentage of outstanding is going down. There's a cluster of bonds that trade more frequently. Uh, but you know, liquidity, part of the liquidity problem is that there's not more bonds that you can trade. Part of the problem there is to get a price at which you're willing to start a trade. Um, we've been in the end of day pricing business for, for 40 plus years. Uh, we've, over the past several years, changed the way that we do that, uh, that ser provide those services and, and what we can do internally and now can consume data and, and make those evaluations throughout the day and more importantly, get the information into the hands of the clients so that they know, they have an independent opinion about where value resides and feel more comfortable to trade some of the bonds that otherwise are not really trafficking in the market. Right, and, and, and you know, while the role of the dealer has changed, um, and in some cases they've had to back away a little bit, you know, the market still needs the dealer. So you know, how are these tools and technologies uh, just helping to create a more efficient market while still sort of including all of the market participants? So institutional investors are looking for a market structure and marketplace which is better than what we have today and with more liquidity and which can facilitate more liquidity than uh, what we have today. That means that uh, our clients want what's there now, the voice market, and on top of that, some deep institutional pools of liquidity that help them get trades that cannot be easily facilitated via capital commitment or via the traditional channels. Right. So, so the market's obviously gone through quite a bit of changes. There's no question we're, we're almost 20% uh, of volume in investment grade is trading electronically today, which is a huge jump from just a few years ago. Um, but the change has been sort of slow and steady uh, over the last few years. So if we can look forward a little bit, um, you know, as rates start to rise, as electronic trading adoption grows, as data availability expands, um, you know, what do you think is next, uh, Bill, for the fixed income market? Well, what we're seeing and what we're being asked by clients for are, are ways to evaluate the TCA, the best execution, uh, as, a, as a big priority. Um, you know, as we introduce new ways to trade, there's more places to go. It still remains a decentralized system, though. So, you know, are you getting great execution on, uh, on LiquidNet? Or, you know, where, where are, you know, what are the best places to go to get? How do you prove that the prices that you received were, were quality prices? Uh, you know, there's regulatory imperatives that, that are driving that as well, as well as just best practices and understanding what you're doing and where, and where you ought to be uh, trading. Sure, and, and trace data is just not enough in today's market structure. Trace data is a big input for us. Uh, it's an important input, but it's not the only thing that we see, and it's not, you know, and the markets are so dynamic, you know, what happened 20 minutes ago on trace um, still needs, you, you need some judgment on where, what does that mean for now? Um, and you know that's what we do for a living. We we, you know, we have a team of over 200 people 
who do nothing but tr uh, price bonds all day long. Um, and you know, for our clients, that, that's a big team in the bullpen to help them out. Absolutely. Constantinus, where do you see next for the fixed income market? Sure. Um, I think there's definitely been a conscious effort by the market overall. I want to say the market, um, referring to the institutional investors, the trading platform operators, the sell side, to actually improve what's there today. And the two issues that have been uh, you know, very widely discussed, uh, one is the risk of a demand supply imbalance uh, on the back of a macro event, micro event, or even just a rates rise. Uh, and second is, uh, how do we make sure that we bring together the buyers and the sellers in the event that there is this imbalance? Uh, now, uh, at Liquinet, what we're trying to help solve is the second problem, which is, if there is a demand supply imbalance, how do we make sure that the buyers and the sellers come together in a way that facilitates the flow of liquidity, protects their information, and lets them trade bigger sizes, which is, is more and more difficult. So this is, this is, I think, one of the trends that we're going to see, a, uh, a new market structure that takes what's there today and supplements it with new market solutions. All right. Yeah, the change is always, uh, there's always some pain in the change, but the end result will be, will be a positive one. Great. Bill Constantino, thanks for, for Thank being you. here Thank today. You, I'm Kevin McPartland from Greenwich Associates. Thanks so much for listening.